Now, you know, Indie Comics is at the center of what we do here at Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel. And this week at Comics Pro, one of the talks of the event was Bad Idea. Now, if you're not familiar with what hashtag bad idea is, it's been floating throughout social media for the better part of the last year from former Valiant CEO and owner Dinesh Sham Dasani, as well as others and several creators within the independent community have been showing the hashtag all over social media, along with random artwork and so on and so forth. And now we finally have an idea of what this is it's a publishing company uh, with what they're calling a bad idea, and they're looking to revolutionize the market. So here are the details that we know as of right now. We are looking at a company that's only gonna distribute their books directly to 20 stores to start, uh, eyeing towards 50 in the near future. So very limited distribution. They're gonna lock retailers into agreements that will force the retailers to comply to certain guidelines, like one per customer, $3.99 cover price. Um, there's going to be no variance. They are not going to collect the issues in trade. Um, they're only going to release one to two books per month to keep release numbers down um, and allow retailers to really focus on those issues. Uh, this is what they're deeming a bad idea for kind of obvious reasons because uh, some of the things that are at the core principles of the company kind of fly in the face of the business side of comics. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But with a roster like Jeff Lemire, uh, Matt Kint, uh, Robert Venditti, uh, Marguerite Bennett, uh, Jody Hauser, they're coming with some of the biggest names in independent comics. So I pose this question to the panel. Is bad idea a bad idea? Or are you excited to collect these limited comics? You stole my joke, man. <laughs> You stole my, I was going to say, I hope this doesn't turn into a bad idea. So um, when I first dig into some of these reads and I'm first reading about this, um, some of this information you guys have shared, I'm like, I don't know. And right up front, I felt like they lost a part of me when they say prestige format. But Jeff Lemire, I mean, the, the, the writers and the people they have that they're lining up, I'm like, oh man, I'm going to have to get a new, I'm going to have to look at getting a new set of shelves. Um, three ninety nine, one copy per customer. The more I think about this, and and the more we talk about this, the more I want to call my LCS and be like, "Hey, can you guys get on that first list? Can you guys get in that first twenty or that first 50 I'll commit to buying one of everything that hits your guys' shelf at three ninety nine, because what is that? That first story that they're doing? Uh, help me out with that, Enac, Enac. Yeah. Oh, that looks good. That looks really good. My interest is really spiked. I'm really curious to hear what you guys had to think about this because at first I was kind of not digging it. Then I was a little torn and now it's really starting to win me over. Well, being that it's bad idea, I kind of like the bad idea, uh, bad, bad boy kind of, uh, or bad uh, company going against the grain. I like that. I've always been that way. Rebel, I guess. Um, but uh, I think you talked about uh, manufacturing um, scarcity or something along that lines. And are they trying to create, I want to know what the actual goals are really. Are they trying to create a book that's going to be valuable down the road? Or are they trying to create a really good story? I get the idea of having to have less stuff maybe on the shelves and making their book more kind of stand out or their story stand out. They're very, they want it to be a, uh, let, you have to have let, making less choices is good, and so and it, and it's going to be more of a prestigious book. But is it just them trying to create make make a story that sets their 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 company off so that they can be known as this company that just totally went off the what went off left uh, left field, similar to what like I guess kind of like what Image did or um, you know where they pulled all the all the artists uh, artists out and said okay we're going to go over here with do this we're going to be completely different. Um, it, it works for a while, but is that going to be sustainable? I mean, there's a reason why there's so many books being, uh, being made by Marvel and, and DC. And I understand what they're trying to do, but is that going to be sustainable? And what does it look like in five, 10 years? Right. I was going to piggyback off that also. Is this, if you're looking at it from business or marketing, is one to two books a month and a $3.99 cover price 
with 20 participating stores to start. That's a great start. How are you going to finish? I'm also curious, what's the criteria to get on that list to be able to carry those books? Um, I'm excited for the books themselves. I kind of see this in the same mindset. I think it'd be successful, but I see it in the same mindset of TKO, but the opposite end of the spectrum where TKO wants to make sure that, hey, if you want to read this, great stories, we, we, can, we got them for you. We got them in trade. We got them in floppy issues where bad ideas taking the opposite approach and they're saying, hey, it's not going to be digital. It's not going to be trade paperback. It's going to be a single issue. We have a one per customer pledge. There's only going to be one to two per month. But just like TKO, they have this fantastic creator lineup to get the ball rolling on it. No doubt you're going to get great stories. There's going to be some great art. I, too, am not a big fan of the prestige format, but I like the fact that each issue is also going to be more than your standard 22 to 32 pages. It's going to be an oversized. So I think there's going to be great books. That I think this is going to be a great idea from a reader perspective, but you're messing with that reader perspective by creating that, hey, we're limited. We're only in some few stores. So you're going to have a kind of a clash of the two. I just hope it's successful because I do like the idea of it. I wonder about that as well as whether, you know, they're manufacturing scarcity or are they just setting the bar for themselves at a realistic level so that they don't burn themselves out and they're shuttering their company in a year? I, I really wonder. I think it's some of it. I think, I, I think the manufacturing scarcity thing is fair because they are trying to take um, a direct approach to the secondary market. Yeah. And be very boutique. At the same point, I look at it and go, this is the way I look at it. First off, I look at it similar to the way I look at Punchline. I think all things that make news, all things that are different, all things that are innovative within our hobby and industry are good. Um, so inherently, I think this is good the same way I think TKO is good, the same way I think Scout's um, binge line is good. I think that kind of in innovation is how we are going to continue to have this hobby even exist. I think you also have to understand who's creating this line. First off, Dinesh Shambhasani is one of the, not only does he have the pedigree of the fact that he owned Valiant Comics and during like the renaissance of them coming back and killing it um, and building into where they had a movie, um, the tanking of Valiant has only happened since he's left. Um, but also his partner is this guy, Adam, Adam Bang Freeman. Adam Freeman, A-T-O-M. Uh, Freeman, if you follow him on social media, he is a salesman extraordinaire. He is the guy that pushed uh, Valiant into comic stores when they came back out of bankruptcy. Um, he has run shops before, so his understanding of the secondary market is um, one that will allow him to probably put this plan into place. The interesting thing is going to be what's going to, I live in South Carolina. I'm going to tell you straight up right now, there's maybe one store within any sort of driving distance of me that may have these books. From what I'm getting is I don't think we're going to see them sold online. So right. only, Yeah, it's only going to be physical yeah. there. In your shop. Yeah. So yeah. what is going to happen to those Iowans, uh, you know, or uh, people of Nebraska? Um, they, these books on eBay, in my mind, are going to all spike above cover price. They naturally almost have to. Because if there's any sort of demand at all for these stories, there's no way the supply can physically meet that demand. Because even if these stores are getting a ton each, like Brian said, if the requirement is you have to buy like two, 300 uh, of each title to be able to carry it, even if those stores are getting those, it, the access to those stores is going to be so difficult because you have to buy them physically in store. Um, you're going to have to rely on a flipper market. It's actually going to be very good, I think, for flippers who live by a store who carry these books. And then it's going to be the onus is going to be on these books, on these retailers to not just limit one per store, but don't let, first off, to stick to that. I've worked with shoe companies where they, that's a part of your contract. And, you know, they, they do things like send plants in to try to buy two Jordans and see if you sell them. Um, you know, you may have to take steps like that to enforce it. Is bad idea in a position to do that? But the thing to understand is that the creators in bad idea are also partners. So I really don't think they have anything to lose, right? Because we're talking about Matt Kinn and Jeff Lemire. They've all got booming careers. Yep. This sounds like a really fun, almost like side project, test project. That's why I think they call it bad idea. Like it's on paper, this seems like a bad idea for a company, not because they can't penetrate enough readers or sell enough books. Um, 
I think the, the key loss is trades. Trades are where so many independent companies make so much of their money. So they won't be able to sell trades. So they're going to rely on so much secondary market buzz that it allows them to continue to sign up more retailers and sign up more retailers, sign up more retailers. Now, by not selling the diamond, they're going to make a higher margin. And the only thing I'd say about the prestige format is I think they're trying to go quality everything, which is why like they've been working on the, they've written these books for the last year. These book, half of these books are done. Um, and they're focusing on quality. And I think because the DC black label stuff has been viewed as like the quality kind of book in our market right now, I think they were trying to kind of mimic that and give it that kind of, um, upscale feel with the prestige format. I get how people feel about that. I just think that we're all going to have to get used to, um, having those bags and boards and those boxes and, um, adjusting to these types of releases. Yeah, it's like the aficionado uh, category of comic books where I haven't gotten on the prestige and I haven't really liked that format because it's pretty much DC <laughs> on the front lines of that. And at eight, nine dollars a book, I'm not a buyer for stories that I'm not into. Nor am I going to change the way I'm collecting and storing comic books for stuff that I'm just not interested in reading at, you know, eight, nine dollars a book. Three ninety nine. Now we're talking, man. One thing that I think that is also important to know is that one of the partners in this is um, the partner with Dinesh and Hivemind. And Hivemind is the production company that has brought Witcher to Netflix, that has brought Bloodshot to Sony, that has brought um, uh, or is bringing Gideon Falls to television. So the fact that the people behind this publishing company are also the people who are this involved in Hollywood production I think bodes very well for investors in these issues um, because I think they're going to get a lot of early attention. I just keep hearing prestige worldwide, worldwide. Prestige worldwide. 